It's just understanding while looking at any given green, understanding where the trouble is and what shot you should try to hit into it to give you the best miss location. Hey guys, welcome back to the Match Play Podcast. My name's Jeff and this is my buddy Bill. We met through golf. That's what brought us together. Uh, we've been friends for the last decade or so. I'm a chiropractor now and a high-level amateur with aspirations of turning professional, and this is Bill. Hi guys, Bill Boos, longtime club fitter out here in San Diego. Just happy to be here and talk about the game with you guys and looking forward to talking about how to break down the golf course and how everybody can shoot their best scores. Yeah, guys, we're talking about course management today. These are things you should do prior to going to a golf course, especially if you're going to go play a golf tournament, as well as things you can incorporate into your breakdown of golf courses while you're going through the course. Bill, where do you want to start? Uh, I'd say we start kind of breaking it down. You know, let's, let's talk about getting yourself a goal for the day and okay. not thinking about the entire golf course thinking about you know going from how do we you know we want to shoot par how do we get there how do we need to attack a golf course to give us the best opportunities to achieve the goal we're looking for okay i mean first thing that comes to mind for me is keeping the ball in play hugely um so let's start there so obviously now we have launch monitors, and that allows us to get an actual definitive statistic for what our dispersions are off the tee with every club in the bag, honestly. Yeah, it significantly helps. And yeah, if you, don't, if you don't have access to one, I highly recommend going to a local golf store or a club champion. Or Honestly, at this point, they're so affordable. It, it's smart if you really enjoy playing golf to get one and have it in your garage or in a room. Yeah. Let's all yeah. get that dream that dream man cave we can, or uh, woman cave, if we should say. Um, the the stats we get off of that are just huge, and it's something we can really, if you can take that dispersion statistic for every single club and bring it to the golf course, it's going to lower your score. Absolutely, and to Jeff's point there, guys, you know, even if we don't have, you know, room in the house or anything like that, you know, we can get really nice uh, small launch monitors that you can put behind you at the range on your range sessions. You know, and they're only a couple of hundred bucks and they're pretty accurate and it'll allow to get you that real versus feel that we're kind of all kind of chasing really. Interesting thing, I was working with a guy yesterday and we were talking about this same thing, feels versus reels and having a, he was having a tough day getting a little bit across the ball with the driver, a uh, little left path, but having that quantitative number of what he is doing in a course of half an hour and just kind of understanding where his path actually is compared to the feel in which it is it made him switch from a little cutty to a little inside to out and he was really striking the driver well so having that understanding of what is actually going on compared to what you feel is going on is a massive way forward yeah i mean that plays back to our last episode where we talked about uh feel versus real and bringing mm -hmm. you on the golf course Definitely. getting back to that dispersion rate obviously something you can get at the range like bill said when we take that to the golf course this is what's determining what our aim point is off of every single shot so we talked slightly about this in the last episode i believe but we're going to go a little deeper today so let's start at the t and then we'll kind of work our way backwards once we we get to the green sounds good um into that theory so off the t we should optim honestly probably have about like a 40 to 50 yard dispersion rate with our driver that's kind of ideal it's a little bit larger than tour average i'd say for an amateur absolutely yeah and so when we're looking at a, a a golf hole let's say there's water all the way up the right side there's a bunker on the left and the fairway is 30 yards wide if that bunker is just outside the fairway on the left and there's nothing wrong being left of that bunker that bunker or maybe the right edge of that bunker should be the center of your dispersion because we're not ever going to hit every single shot 
directly on the line we aim at. Of course not. And if we can take that 50-yard dispersion and have 30 yards right of that bunker be in the fairway, but not in the water, well, great. I mean, if center of our dispersion, let's say it's 50 yards dispersion, center, 25 yards right, we're still in the fairway, we hit a dead straight, maybe we get into the bunker. Honestly, if we if we know our distances, we shouldn't reach it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And if we pull it, or if, for a righty, if we pull it, we're going to be just left of that bunker, maybe in some rough, but our ball's in play. Yeah. And that is a huge way. Keeping your ball on the green grass is a huge way to lower your scores in the long run. Absolutely. And, you know, taking that down to its lowest common denominator, every shot, you don't have to pull a ball out of your pocket, is a good shot. Keep it in play. Give yourself, you know, moving towards the right direction. You know, you might not like where it is, but that's golf. You know, go hit the next one. Yeah, and let's move on to the next one. Yeah. Let's say we're on that same hole and we're taking our shot at our approach shot into the green. We should consider what's going to make our scores higher if we were to miss in an area. So let's say there's a bunker short and left. Mm -hmm. If that pin is directly behind that bunker, there's no way I'm aiming directly at that pin because that's probably a left edge pin, let's say, or a tucked left pin. If we've got plenty of green to the right, I'd rather aim right at that pin a couple yards, knowing my dispersion with that iron I have is probably in that like 20 yard to 30 yard uh, sideways. So if I'm aimed 15 yards right at that pin and I have the space left, and honestly in this scenario, I'd probably be aiming more like 15 to 20 yards right of that pin because I know my shot dispersion will leave me on the green with a putt and I'm knowing that bunker's short, going to take a little extra club because it's better to be a little long. I have more green passed and I'd rather take that bunker out. Yeah. And to just point here, you know, if, if it's a little hard to digest, you're not really, you know, versed in what's going on here in terms of course management and managing a hole. It's just understanding while looking at any given green, understanding where the trouble is and what shot you should try to hit into it to give you the best miss location. To Jeff's point, if we have a short, short you know, front bunker, taking a little extra club, maybe playing it a little, little left because that's the safest spot, that's going to give you the easiest up and down and the easiest opportunity to make that par when we, if, if and when we eventually miss a green. That's, that's really what's going on here. And it's understanding a miss location uh, is key number one. You know, you'd want, this is why, you know, a lot of the tour pros you see have a lot of easy up and downs, a lot of, you know, a lot of green to work with stuff. When everybody talks about just not being short sighted, it's because they've pre planned on their approach shot for that miss to be in the proper location to give them the best chance of making a par. <clears throat> yep, exactly. And we, we can kind of go into a lot of in depth nitpicking about this whole topic mm -hmm. but bill bill summarized that really well it, it is really about learning how to break a course down by eliminating the higher number or that short-sighted spot so that we can give ourselves more opportunities to make a shot or not have a really stressful high pressure shot that we have to hit where we're short-sighted or have to go with over water or stuff like that we're just trying to take the pressure out of the game a little bit so that you can really settle into the skills that you've developed on that driving range and really um, execute it on the golf course. Exactly. And it just, you're put you're setting yourself up for success when you start to look at this stuff. You know, like Jeff's point off the tee, you know, play your dispersion. If you're a guy that hits it a little left, a little right, okay, allow for either way. Same thing when coming into a green, you know, and I saw on a an interview with Tiger about how he, you know, we always talk, take dead aim, you know, fire your, fire your flag stick, you know, just, you know, be aggressive on the golf course. And something that really stuck out to me in that, in, in that, uh, interview was the fact that, yeah, he's playing aggressively every single hole. That's Tiger Woods. I mean, he's got enough skill to, you know, be able to do that, but he's not firing at every flag stick guys. That's not what being aggressive is about. It's about being aggressive to the spot you chose. Like Jeff was saying, if he sees a, a short right, or sorry, a short front bunker, he's going to play out to the right, away from it, a little bit more club. Because if he just has 
a bad swing right then, he's still giving himself the best best opportunity to, one, either get up and down or still hit the green and give himself a putt coming in. And understanding that we're not going to hit good shots 100% of the time is really important to starting to manage expectations and really start to pick apart individual holes. Yeah, being aggressive to your plan or your spot is huge in golf, and you a, a great way to grade yourself on it is simply to do that mm -hmm. on your scorecard. Add uh, how how committed was I to my plan for that hole or for that particular shot? If you really want to break it down into the number of shots you hit on that hole, give yourself that letter grade, and you'll you'll realize that when you go onto the range and you try and commit to the shot you want to hit on the driving range, mind don't don't just beat balls when you're doing this. Literally pick a target, create a fairway on out of the, the pins that are out on the driving range, commit to the shot you want to hit, and grade yourself. That is another great way to bring that that range game to the golf course. And and yeah, and you got something else there. Yeah, bro? absolutely. Uh to your point there, Jeff, it's not only just like creating the fairway and putting yourself in, you know, that that kind of play golf scenario on the range. You know, if you're good enough to do it, and not all of us are, I understand that, but it's a definitely a way forward, is to not only create a fairway, see your target, you know, really pre-plan pre the shot, but be honest with yourself and whether or not you're executing the shot that you pre-planned. If you want to hit a high draw, cool, you know, make sure we hit that high draw. Same thing if you're trying to work the ball left to right, you know, a little short fade, you know, be honest with yourself and whether or not you truly hit what you were deciding to do. Um, if it's a little fade, if it's a little draw, whatever. But having those experiences and seeing it come out exactly how we're pre-planning it will give you that understanding of, you know, we're on a golf course now. These are shots that I plan to hit. We're not just beating balls on the range, and we're really going forward to try to execute the game plan that we put in for from the tee box into the fairway into the green and being able to work the ball and have control of your golf ball will only lead to more success. Agree. But like we said in the last video, manage your expectations when you're doing that because you don't want to get extremely frustrated with a small miss or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Now, back to um, kind of breaking down the course. Mm -hmm. One thing that we should do, and I think has helped me in, in playing golf when I was in high school, it was one of the things that really helped me break down golf courses, is trying to play holes backwards. It kind of plays into this thing called Angles yeah, Theory. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> it, it's big. And if anyone disagrees with Angles Theory, it's a thing, and it's very important to lowering your golf scores because it takes out the the hazards in a way, or, or and it gives you that better angle so you can be more aggressive into pins which we know if we can actually be more aggressive, we have shorter shots into that hole location, meaning putts, which means we have a higher percentage of making a, that putt and making birdies, eagles, or pars, depending on where we are and how we're doing. So angles theory is about just that, giving yourself the best angle into the hole so you can be the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. So playing holes backwards means we need to understand where that pin location is before we even tee off on that hole. We need to know whether it's back, front, middle. We need to know if it's tucked right, tucked left, so on and so forth. Based off of the angle of that pin and the hazards around it, we need to then prep our approach shot to being the best angle into that pin location. So let's say it's a tucked right pin and there's a bunker short right in this scenario. We would prefer to be as far left as possible because that means when we're visually looking at this tucked right hole location, we see less of that bunker and more green, which means we have more to attack. That also then means that to get to that approach shot that's in the left half of the fairway, we need to bring the majority of our dispersion towards that left side of the fairway, which means off the tee, we need to be aiming at whatever target gives us the majority of our dispersion being the left side of the fairway. Honestly, even some of the rough. <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, the whole being in the fairway, yeah, it's gonna give you the best chance for the, the optimal uh, conditions to hit the best shot and to execute that shot, but being in the rough 
you just know that, hey, I'm probably going to have a little less spin, mm -hmm. which just means I need to aim a little further left and a little shorter because that ball is probably going to roll on the green instead of check up. Exactly. And, you know, to Jeff's point about playing angles off the tee and then into the greens, you know, green backwards, understand, let's just, for example, say we have a 400-yard par four. Bunker left, uh, fairway bunker left, bunker short right, just as Jeff was referring to. So we know we want to be on the left side of this fairway to give us the best angle into this green. But at the same time, guys, we want to position ourselves, think of it as like left of center. Um, we don't need to be we don't need to be exaggerating, you know, the amount of left to get us this angle. We just need to position slightly left. And the more left that we can be, the better angle, ang better angle you might get. But it's not worth, you know, putting yourself in severe trouble just for that angle. So, you know, sometimes depending on what the whole layout is, a little bit left or a little bit right, depending on how your approach shot needs to be, needs to come into the green, will generally be plenty. Um, we don't need to be far left, far right. You know, we sometimes we just need to be left of the center cut, you know, right of the center cut, depending on what we want to see. And we're looking to play percentages into your, in, into the green on your approach shots. And not only is direction, you know, left or right for that tee ball important, it's, it's also important to understand what you're going to be coming into the green with. We got a short par four, we hit it a pretty good distance off the tee, then chances are we got a short iron or a wedge. That's a scoring opportunity, especially given when you position yourself correctly off the tee. Now we're hitting a short iron into the green. We don't have a protected pin because we've accounted for that protected pin off one of the, with, our tee, with our tee shot. Now we're really getting a green light to come into this green and hit an aggressive shot to give us that best chance at birdie. And that's how we need to analyze holes and look at the trouble the slopes how the green lays out and really start to create create a plan in our minds and then execute on that plan for that given hole and over the course of 18 there's several different looks so like we talked about a little bit in the last video golf's a four-hour marathon staying in it stay into your plan is hugely important to getting those scores to lower and not just once but several times you know every time you go out and just execute on your plan make sure it gets done and you'll start to see those scores come down regularly because now we're dissecting a golf course the way it's intended really yeah uh i feel like we've probably talked about that a lot yeah well we, uh, we, we both that topic we, we both kind of you know play that way and think it's the best way to manage, yeah. manage a golf course so yeah a hundred percent the only thing that I might add to this, which we've kind of talked about in little bits here and there through this video, is another thing to add in if you've already kind of understand the, the angles theory and you're doing that, but you're not quite seeing your scores go down, you're probably not considering the concept of breaking down the golf course into angles and, the, and into each individual shot to give you the best opportunity to be aggressive. You have to be able to also draw back if you don't get into that angle and understand, okay, where's the best place to miss mm -hmm. that gives me the most green to work with to get up and down or just onto the green so that I can have a putt, regardless if it's 40 feet. I, if it's 40 feet, you're still on the green putting. You've avoided the hazards that the course designer has put out there to keep your ball from going in the hole. Mm -hmm. That's a huge plus. So avoiding being short-sighted is a huge addition to this whole course management uh, idea that you need to get down. Uh, definitely. And, you know, we touched on it a little bit ago, but to Jeff's point there, you know, just understanding where the the least amount of trouble is around a green, you know, we don't want to be short-sighted. You know, most people know that. But two things you want to think about is, one, where can this ball possibly land Am I going to be, if I hit it, you know, into a deep grass bunker? Yeah, I played my shot shape, but is that really the best spot? Because now I'm, my shots are limited. I'm probably going to have to play something open face high in the air rather than missing in 
you know, a better location that might be a longer run up, a little, little easier grass to where I can hit. Yeah, more green to work. Exactly. With. Just a, just a more uh, flatter kind of chip where I can just kind of get it rolling like a putt. And the percentage of that shot goes, you know, goes up tremendously. There's just not. Yeah, astronomically. Yeah, exactly. So there's just not a lot of trouble most people have with a basic chip. But when you start putting in rough and slopes and the ball's sitting down, we have to get it high. That's where a lot of the amateurs don't hit that shot, you know, very well. And frankly, it's a tough shot. But at the same time, yeah. you can pre-plan to not be in that same spot. By It's part of the reason why we see so many holeouts on the PJ Tour. Oh, is because they're missing in the right spot and not giving themselves a short-sighted position. That and those guys are pretty good. But <laughs> oh, they're very good. Yeah. But, but it, it, yeah, it goes down to the amateur level. One reason. It goes down to the amateur yeah. level. You know, if you, there's a reason why these guys attack a golf course the way they do. Because they understand that this is the, one, best way to make a birdie, and two, the easiest way to make a par. Yeah. Well... We've probably talked this this topic to uh, to an end at this point, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up on this episode this week. If you like what you guys are hearing, please join the conversation in the comments below. We'd love to cover some topics that you guys want to hear about. Again, we'd appreciate it if you like, subscribe, uh, and share these videos with your friends and family as it helps us continue to do this. We're here giving a conversation about a topic we love, which is golf, and we hope you guys enjoy it as well. Have a great one, guys. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.